Oh man, look at that. This crap already fell apart. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So recently a lot of my projects I've been working on, I've been needing to sandblast or clean off the parts and the rust and everything that I've been dealing with. So I decided to run down the Harbor Freight and pick up this central pneumatic uh, sandblasting cabinet. It's a smaller one. I think it was only like $105 after coupon. I think anytime you buy anything from Harbor Freight, you should know to use that 20% off coupon, especially if it's a big ticket item. The only thing that usually that coupon doesn't apply to is the jacks and the central machinery not central pneumatic stuff. So anyway, um, I gotta unbox it today, assemble it. Uh, I'm gonna seal up uh, all the seams and cracks that uh, on the inside of the cabinet, and just in case it leaks or uh, media gets out through there, because that's one of the biggest complaints about these uh, Harbor Freight cabinets, that they leak media through the corner. So we'll go ahead and uh, seal those up today. So this thing comes with everything inside the cabinet, which makes sense just to save the volume. So it's got one latch and inside what we have is we have the, it comes with some of these protective plastic sheets, which you'll find one already installed on here that's taped to it. It doesn't really go all the way to the edge. It's kind of poorly installed anyways. They actually sell this plastic on Amazon. You can pick up some that might fit a little bit better. But the reason why they have this is because when you're blasting, you're gonna end up uh, basically etching your glass and you wanna save this glass because you gotta look through this as a window. So you wanna be able to put these protective film on here. And then once it gets uh, too etched up and you can't see anything, you just peel it off and put on a new one. But yeah, inside you've got your gun. So a lot of people complain about these edges, which looks like it comes with a little silicone sealant already in there but i'm going to inspect the inside and see if i need to install additional silicone sealant oh man look at that this crap already fell apart what a piece of crap anyway it doesn't look like uh anything that i can't just fix yeah this latch is a piece of crap i think i might have read some reviews regarding this stupid latch but yeah the moment i got the top one in the bottom one fell out so after some fumbling around with this i finally got it to stay in there and latch and unlatch correctly all i did was take this big old channel locks squeeze this thing together once i got it all back in the hole then i bent these things a little bit right there so that it kind of gives it a little bit of friction you just gotta keep an eye on it so to keep those little springs in i decided just to grab that little cable and i just twisted it on like a safety cable right here and down there so that way it doesn't pop out with, over time at least, uh, even if it did pop out of these holes, at least it won't go flying somewhere. The tray inside that you could do work on, you could remove that out of there to clean the inside. As far as the outside unit, you can see the construction on it. The edges here look kind of suspect right here, especially with this gap. So it's got it's a wrap around. So you got the screws that hold it in. You've got your opening right here, which is for the vacuum. You've got this extra grommet up here used for whatever uh, you need to come in or out of the unit. So on the back side, you have your air hose hole that goes right here for your gun. And then up here is the intake vent for the air that sucks through if you're using the vacuum system. But yeah, overall for a hundred bucks, you really can't complain considering it comes with the gun and everything. And it's a pretty good blast cabinet for beginners. So if we look under the underside, when I flip this thing up, you can see the base of it right here. There is a little bit of sealant uh, along the seam here it doesn't look that great i might end up having to redo this because yeah it looks like right here you can see a little gap and then they kind of just half assed it along the way so i'll go ahead and seal that up with some clear rtv just to make sure that this baby is completely sealed so i sealed up all the existing seams right here which was already sealed up before lightly. You know, you can see right there, they barely did that. And I went ahead and did the all around the corners because this is like a double walled type of uh, construction. So who knows how good those welds that they put in there are. 
that or the glue or whatever they did before to adhere it together so i just held, go, went ahead and just sealed that all around just in case it leaks so i'm gonna go inside now and do the rest of it inside so we got everything sealed up inside along all those seams i put that clear rtv up there and then some of those corners over here i ended up hitting that and then the sides right here I ended up finishing those up so pretty much everything's sealed inside pretty good hopefully there's no leaks or anything any media or anything through those cracks over the time so once you take all the parts apart so what you got in the kit is you got your regular gun the blaster gun so it comes with four ceramic tips that you could change depending on how wide or how narrow you want your blast beam to be you change that out using that allen key and then the set screws on the back side here right there and then right here you've got the siphon tube so the metal part of the siphon tube actually goes all the way down to the base down there through this hole on the side of the grate right here so once you put the siphon hose to the bottom you to suck up the media you plug this up into there and then the gun you have to add air to it so if you look in here i ran my little air hose so i've got this little piece of air hose and then on the back side i actually still have my filter and it's probably a good idea to keep a air oil separator filter back here or on your line just to keep the moisture out of the cabinet from messing up your media over here with my craftsman air compressor this thing is not too reliable uh, it keeps on tripping out once i get to a certain pressure i fixed it a bunch of times already with the capacitor and all that crap but i still trip breakers all the time luckily the breakers are in the garage and it's easy to reset them when i need for lighting options a lot of people end up putting some kind of light inside here like a little strip light or you could just put a led panel light like this on the outside while you're working on it to shine it through the window what i'm going to do is i've got some of these little cob strips i have used on the minivan before for just the interior lighting i still have a second set of these that i never use they already have double-sided tape on them so i'm gonna just go ahead and stick them i think i'm gonna stick one right down here and then I'm gonna do another one up top there, right in the center. And then I think that little grommet up there is really for the light option, or if you wanted to add a light so you could put your power through there. So I'm just gonna run the wire through that hole. And for the power supply for these LEDs, I'm just using this little power bump or power plug or whatever. For hard drives, if you watch a lot of my hard drive videos, I, I shuck a lot of hard drives. So I end up having a lot of these external power supplies. They're 12 volts. And this particular one is I think 750 milliamps. I might go grab one of the one and a half milliamps in case it's not enough juice to power these LEDs. So we pulled the wire through the grommet and I'm just gonna pull these through right here. I drilled that hole earlier for this. I need a screwdriver or something to make a hole bigger. So depending on what um, type of block you end up using, I had tested this thing. So that it looks like the stripe on this particular one, the one that has a white stripe on it is a positive after testing it with a continuity meter. And then I made sure that I used the male and a female side on this side that's opposite over here on this end. So that way we don't mix it up or screw it up or accidentally cross the wires when we plug it up. So we'll go ahead and Plug it in now. Plug this side to an outlet and we'll see if it comes on. Oh yeah. We'll go look inside now. So there it is. We have inside cabinet lighting now. Two little LED strips. We go turn off the overhead lights and we'll see how bright this is inside. So not bad for working, light working inside the cabinet while we're got stuff in there. So. Little good, good little rig there. I think those lights only costed me like five or six bucks for that set. And uh, you know, just finding that power plug, but 
turned out pretty great for this particular cabinet. So the next mod we're gonna do, we're gonna add this dust collection filter thing. This one fits perfectly into the hole right there. Just goes right in and I'm gonna do it with this little collection can right here that I'm gonna use. A lot of people use like a five gallon bucket. This thing is basically a Chinese copy of the Dust Buddy, which is like a 60 or $70 part for basically the same thing. It's like a little tube thing that, that collects all the dust and everything into a trash can so you don't clog up your uh, vacuum. So it's a pretty simple device. It just air goes into here, it spins all the dust and everything and materials just drops down while the air sucks through here. It's got a little lip inside that prevents any of the heavy stuff to go up into the vacuum. So it kind of saves your vacuum and it doesn't recirculate any of the dust inside out into the air. So I got this thing for like $27 on Amazon and it comes with these little tubes that help fit it. They're, they're hard tubes, so just in case your vacuum doesn't uh, fit right into there. I've already tested it on my vacuum, so it's a like a half a millimeter difference. So that half a millimeter really matters. The one end goes perfectly into here and then the other end goes into the vacuum tube perfectly fine. So I might end up using that on there, which is perfect because I think this hole and that other hole didn't fit the vacuum too well. So I got, got this lid on, but then looks like I misjudged the studs right here. So it's blocking the way that this thing screws on. So I might have to just flip these around the other way to make it work. Yeah, just flip that baby around. Now this thing just screws right on. So perfect. So I'm gonna attach it to the thing. So I'll just have a little filtration system on the side that hangs off without taking up too much room. So in order to make this like sturdy, I think I gotta flip this the other way around and then screw it in. That way it has a lip that goes going outward instead of inward. And then that way I can use that little clamp that it comes with to try to tighten it down. I thought it was gonna tighten down better, but looks like this thing's too stiff right here to actually, you know, have that clamp do anything. So I think what I'm gonna do is maybe get something like tape or something, and just get it so it sits in there much snugger than it does now. Yeah, that fabric tape worked pretty good. Went in there nice and tight. I put two wraps around it and it's held pretty good. Look at that, it won't move anywhere. So that's perfect for what I needed to do right there. Just kind of sit there. And then if I ever, whenever I'm not using it, I could just take this out and put it on the inside out of the way which is nice instead of using that five gallon bucket. The only thing with this setup is I'm gonna have to dump this more often, but you know, I'm gonna just do little projects here and there anyway. It's not like I'm running this thing all day and filling it up really quickly. So this is perfect for the dust collection I need. So I was explaining earlier how this thing fits right into there so you could fit it with the hose. But the problem is it only fits with this guy, which is I don't need it this high, but it slides in perfectly and it sits somewhat snug in there, but not, you know, 100% snug. It's good enough to, once the vacuum hits, that it would hold, but just way too high up here for the thing. And then if you try to plug the hose up into there, it, yeah, it, this hose is not the same at diameter, inner diameter as that. So you end up getting it loose. So the best way to do this is if we had like one of those little intake collars that fit right over here and then fits there and then creates a little silicone uh, seal right here with the intake collar. You don't even have to clamp it, you just need it to hold the two joints together, but I don't have one of those right now. So finally ready to test this baby out. So I've got the Centro Pneumatic 80 grit glass bead from Harbor Freight. So this stuff was like 35 bucks for a 25 pound bag. I didn't know when I was buying this that I could have bought the Armex, which is soda lime, which is also, I think, is a, is a type of glass bead. 
but there's like a 50 pound bag of it that they sell at Harbor Freight for 50 bucks. And then you have the 20% off coupon, so it ends up being 40 bucks. I use a 20% off coupon on this one because it's central pneumatic. I forgot that when I bought my other stuff, that blue media for my tumbler, that was central uh, machinery, so that, so that coupon didn't apply to that. So today I'm gonna go ahead and try to blast some of these brake parts that I had laying around. So this one I had previously taken like most of the coating off, but there's still some little coating on here that I wanna take off. These were some old brackets that I cleaned up using my vinegar trick uh, that stripped everything down, but it still got some paint on it. And this is one that I haven't touched or anything. I just wanna see what it uh, can do to this guy. And then these pins were for one of the brake calipers I was using and it's starting to corrode a little bit after I cleaned them with a vinegar and, and then tumbler. So you can see that little rust building up on this. I'm gonna try to shoot all this stuff and see how well this thing works on that. And then you can see my vacuum setup. So I've got a 25 pound bag. I'm probably gonna put maybe enough to fill up the bottom right now just to see how this works. And I'll use it as I go. So stuff's like just sand, literally just sand. <laughs> So to go get started with this, I turned up the air pressure to 100 PSI. I'm gonna run the vacuum now, so I'll have to do some voiceover if I have to talk on this segment.
The dust collection system worked like a charm. It collected all this leftover residue or whatever was floating in the air and it just sucked the air out with this whole contraption I made here. But that's a pretty good 20 something dollars if you have a machine like this to do your dust collection. I'll take the parts out now. We'll take a closer look at how they did. So we got all these parts out and yeah, this is the one I did. And you see that it's etched pretty well and it's kind of got two kinds of etches. The darker one is the where I had previously removed the paint in the tumbler. And then the lighter one is the new etching and the new paint removal from this uh, sandblasting. On all these ends, I got these things all cleaned up and they're all nice and etched. So you can compare that to the coating on the one I didn't do right there. I did some of it lightly or just got some overspray from the rest of it, but it's still got a lot of that coating on there that I need to finish on that one. On these pens, the one that I cleaned up, you can see I cleaned up all the rust on them, so they got a nice little etch on them, like a rough etch. Over here was those brake brackets. So you can see that this one I did pretty much fully. I got all the, the stuff off of it and it's got a nice etch to it. If the longer you do it in there, the better the etch and the more you know silver it gets. And then this one, you can see what it used to look like before. I did the back side of this one or I got some overspray also on this one, but you can see that it's got an etch. And then this is that dirty one that was really dirty. So I kind of just have, I'm not going to reuse this piece again because I don't need it, but I just wanted to clean it up because I had not cleaned it with anything else before. But yeah, the, the sandblaster does pretty quick work on stuff like this. But overall, pretty nice tool to have and everyone that messes with cars and stuff should have one of these blast cabinets in their garage. I mean, it's so convenient. All these years I've been sanding and busting my ass and I could have just put it in this thing. Overall, very happy with this tool and the $100 or so and then along with all the little tweaks I had to do to it to get it working perfectly. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in all the way to the end of this episode on tweaking this new little blast cabinet that I got from Harbor Freight. It is a great tool for 100 bucks or 105 bucks or whatever it is. It did go up in price. I was looking when I was doing my research last year, it was a 120 regular price. This year after the pandemic and everything, it went up to 130, but even at 130 it's still a bargain. And then with these little add-ons like the dust collection and just getting the stuff inside and the lights, um, it's a great investment if you don't already have one of these. Uh, if you do a lot bigger stuff, they do make the $180 one that's much bigger than this, that's got the feet on it and all that. For my garage and my bench top working, is the perfect size for me and for all the little projects I'm gonna do. I'm just excited to use it on my the next few projects I have going on where I need to clean up a bunch of old parts and clean everything up for powder coating and paint. So this is a great tool for that. So stay tuned for future episodes for those projects. Anyways, if you guys like this video or found it useful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to your channel already, go ahead and subscribe to your channel and I'll talk to you guys next time.